finish. Yeah. Um, we think it makes the most sense because there's strong, strong ties and dependencies actually between um, observables and web platform primitives that are not in JavaScript, like event target and port controller and port signal. So it's like observables are going to enable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and enable a lot of things that have direct influence with platform primitives. Hey, welcome back. In this episode, Dominic Ferrolino from the Google Chrome team shares his exciting work on adding observables to the browser as a web platform primitive to enhance web performance. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Modern Web. My name is Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leet or on LinkedIn at Tracy S. Lee. And I'm here today with Dominic. How's it going? Yeah, I'm Dominic Ferrolino, uh, software engineer on the Chrome team. You can follow me at Dom Ferrolino everywhere. It's spelled exactly how it sounds. Yeah, even on LinkedIn? Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, cool. So, I am really, really, really excited because you talked about observables of the browser today at Cascadia. And can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, I, I'll give you a brief thing about the origin story. So Ben obviously filed, Ben Lush, the maintainer of RxJS, most popular user land uh, implementation of observables, filed an issue, I think, seven or eight years ago now. To, yeah, I guess the DOM standard to like make it a thing. And it just got a ton of developer hype, and then all the browser engineers just sat on it forever. And I was finishing up a project on Chrome, and I was kind of like, you know, what could I work on that be, that'd be interesting in this water developer facing um, you know, hype and externalities. And so I came across that issue, and I asked my manager, I was like, can I just do it and try and put it into the web platform? And so I worked with Ben, and we presented at TPAC, the WGC conference right. last year. And the Chrome, you know, long story short, the Chrome implementation is pretty much done. The spec is also pretty much done. And I just gave, uh, hopefully, a decent talk yeah. today, uh, trying to get some more you know, evangelization of the API out. So. Yeah. I mean, is there a reason why you chose to work on this? Like, from an adoption standpoint, like, what have you seen? I mean, there's so many things you can choose to work on. Why was it this? Yeah, I, I was interested in getting back. I was, I was coming from some privacy work. I was interested in getting back to the APIs. And I wanted a good, you know, medium-sized project. And I, I, the whole event listening pipeline is just something that's very interesting to me. It's like such a key, you know, fundamental part of both performance and ergonomics on the web. And, and it was like this proposal that was just seemed like this giant pile of diamonds that everybody wanted, but like no one was just doing it. I was like, I think I'm just gonna do it. And it, it seemed like a nice bite-sized you know, project. Oh, yeah, exactly. It literally just took like telling people like I'm working on this. And like, okay. It's, yeah, and it's so annoying, right? Because you think about it, I mean, you know, we've been talking about this for eight years and then yeah. you know, people roll yeah. on, roll off, there's a champion, there's not a champion, you know. And then all of a sudden, like, wow, that was easy. It only, you know, and it's like kind of those things where it's like it takes so long and it feels like it drags out forever because you just don't, like, it becomes a thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then yes. you're like, look, this took me half an hour. Right. <laughs> yeah. I wish it would take you half an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's the mindset. I, I agree. Actually, there's just so many projects, especially on the web platform, that are like that because <clears throat> when adding new APIs to the platform, you're in this like uniquely slow, treacherous territory of like having to get consensus among a bunch of people that are like inherently disagreeable or competitive. Yes, yes, um, yes. And so projects that are actually bite-sized and tractable become like these massive technical burdens and like these emotional right. drains. Right. And so yes. yeah, that's the other other are you doing project. Some no, okay. no. So we're moving. Um, I, I I've looked a, a bit around since thirty nine. I'm. Yeah, I haven't been able to really dedicate the time. Oh, well, to... so TC fifty nine is not mm -hmm. the. It's not. It's not actually. That's not the standard time that's working on this. Exactly. It's what way, right? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's Our a big goal, change. That is a big change. Yeah. It's also a semi-controversial change. Yeah. Um, we think it makes the most sense because there's strong, strong ties and dependencies actually between um, observables and web platform primitives that are not in JavaScript, like event target and port controller and port signal. So it's like observables are going to enable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and enable a lot of things that have direct influence with platform primitives. Um, and so, yeah, we've, we've decided to basically take it on inside the web working group. And um, some DOM and HTML editors in that arena are pretty, pretty excited about the API and uh, have given them a lot of support. 
and we're getting TC39's feedback as well. I'm actually going to probably present our you know, rendition of it this time to them right. because we, we're not trying to like, leave anyone in the or anything. But we think this is the right venue um, for now to get it. And, and, and it's also one concern we've heard is like, well, if you standardize it on the web, how will more people know you're going to use it and other, you know, Dino and stuff like that. Um, but there's the whole winter CG community group that can handle what they manage the standardization of like web platform primitives inside JavaScript environments. And so we're presenting it to them as well and getting their feedback. So it should appear everywhere you can use JavaScript, really. Yes. So that's our goal. And you're not like emotionally right here. Not yet. No, it's been so good. Been it's been good. It's been pushing through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It helps to just kind of just, I don't know. I mean, I think it really helps, right? Like, again, you think about it, it's been eight years, and, you know, there was Docker, and then there was Ben, and then there was, like, Dominic. Was it Dominic? Is that it? Well, it was talking and had a lot of opinions about it in TC39. Yeah, was it? Yeah, so there was, like, I can't remember if he was, I never remember if anybody was, like, pro or against. I just remember there was a lot of conversation around it. Um, so I remember him having a lot of conversation conversation around it as well, but it takes somebody kind of like with a fresh set of eyes to be like, all right, none of this back drama, whatever <laughs> stuff yeah. that's kind of weighing everything down, but like this is where it doesn't work. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, thank you. So are we. We can just roll all that all that history into a clean summary yes, uh, yes, in the bottom yes. of the readme and yes. say, here's, <laughs> here's where we think the standards venue makes the most sense, and we're going for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, and as long as browsers agree, that's you know yeah. that's the best for our developers. And like, so when is the spec going to be implemented? So the implementation in Chrome is pretty much done. Okay. Like all, almost all the code is written, just a couple small things that I have to do left, um, as well as the spec uh, is pretty much finished as well. Right. So literally, it's it's a matter of me doing a couple of the small you know cleanup things that I have to do. And then, unfortunately, renaming the on method to something else because we're conflicting with Dojo and some other external libraries. Um, that's a that's a huge thing I'm disappointed in. I really got into this so we could use the on method on event target, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so we're just gonna rename a couple things and, and call it the one method. Uh, one, one? The one method. So it's like on, but not. Oh, yeah, that one. I was thinking off, but that would actually be even worse. <laughs> Just a meme, right? What's another word for on? I know. I said that I'm Present. I've been like walking around the conference, like thinking, like, all right, there's gotta be something better than just dot observe, which could be it, but it's like, I'd like yeah. to do something that's like really yeah. succinct. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, we're, we're trying to ship it as soon as we can. Yeah. We're getting good feedback from WebKit and Mozilla. And then RxJS can like mm -hmm. write off. Sunset, right, Ben's, Ben's vision, I, I mean, I won't completely speak for him, but uh, his vision for RxJS is, is basically turn it into Lodash for observables. Mm -hmm. Like the guts will just be outsourced to the browser, mm -hmm. but then you'll have all these cute, like, you know, nifty, kind of somewhat yeah. obscure op operators. His cute word, operators. His words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that can just play around with the native implementation, which uh -huh. is the dream. Uh -huh. so that's, okay. that's our goal. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of people on the internet are kind of like, what? RxJS? I've never used it. Who cares about reactive programming, right? And, and, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, what are your thoughts around that? Like, why does it matter to, why does it matter to have this? I think a big thing is, yeah, it's true, people either know everything about it and use it every day, or they've never heard of it. It seems to be like kind of the dichotomy, I mean, there's obviously gray area. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, our is getting more than 47 million downloads a week, mm -hmm. and a bunch of the other user land implementations, you know, one of them is uh, written by Facebook, and you know, a bunch of others are, are getting, they're super, super popular, and they're being used by frameworks and larger libraries that are consuming them, and it's all done in user land, so it's costing bytes, and it's costing CPU cycles in a way that it wouldn't need to if we could make the core, you know, the essence of it inside the browser. Right. And so it's, it should be a huge win um, for, for performance for heavier frameworks and then it also, like, should be something that, like, it, it would just make it easier for developers to, like, use because they don't have to actually download a third-party library. You can just call the on method or whatever we call it in the future and get an observable and start playing with it yourself. So I think I think those two things, you know, the increased ergonomics and the performance right. are driving us. Do you feel like people are going to actually, um, so do you feel like the people who are on the side of, I've never used this before, are going to actually now find value in using it? I think so. Okay. I think so. And why? Like, what's, what are they also going to use it for? Yeah, I think if, that's, that's one of the things I tried to 
kind of elaborate on in my talk was like, here are these basic kind of end listener cases, which are like, like if you try to do something just remotely complicated, it becomes like treacherous. You have one single true and nested remove event listener calls. And, and then I, I basically countered all those examples with like observable equivalents. And it's just like these really succinct self, self tear downing, tearing down, you know, set of pipelines that, of operators that you can use. Um, and we've heard some developers be like, yeah, that is like way sexier than just add a listener callbacks. Like this, right, this makes right, sense. Right. Like I can, I can visualize the pipeline that the event is flowing. And I don't have to think about all the like cruft and arcane, like right. you know, stuff that has in. So, I think the value is, is very much in ergonomics. We, we see it as something as kind of like what promises did for callbacks, mm -hmm. but for multiple events instead of a single value. So I'm hoping to have sort of a a promise level paradigm shift in terms of how you handle events, yeah. which is the dream. So yeah. I know. Yeah, and I'm like excited. People can not stop talking about how they like never use <laughs> sprints anymore. So right. in terms of you know forward thinking, right? Like, okay, you're solving a problem, but like, does adding this into the browser really enable anything else to be kind of standardized in the browser? That's a good question. Well, <clears throat> one of the things we're we're thinking of is what are all the integration points with observables? So you have resize observer, mutation observer, um, intersection observer, more, I'm sure. And it's, and they all have like a similar pattern. Like they would take a callback and then you call observe and you pass on these callbacks and whatever. And we think there are probably those suites of APIs like that where we could actually like add the observe method that returns an observable. <clears throat> so you could, you know, have those flow into other operators that deal with like move events or whatever and kind of make observable like the main primitive for dealing with like, you know, that kind of that kind of API design. And so we're looking at a bunch of a bunch of APIs that can benefit. We get a lot of complaints where people are like, oh I, I use mutation events instead of mutation observer because mutation observer is ugly, it's hard, it's got just these weird APIs and I don't know you know how to pass things in. But if we can just make observables like the one-stop shop for handling this kind of thing, and you can get an observable from all these different kinds of observers, then all of a sudden it becomes like a really vanilla, easy way, like where you don't have to think about it um, to use all these more complicated APIs that are really useful, but we have ergonomics complaints about. Um, so that's that's one of our hopes is we can we can basically bootstrap and bolster the support of other really good performing APIs if we get observables. That's as, exciting. As the main so. I mean, it's happening, right? Like it is happening. That's like what's the like Yeah, no, I don't. I, I mean, we're we're in the process. I can't obviously speak with too much finality, but we're in the process. Of, we have good feedback from WebKit so far, and I think we're still trying to get some feedback from Mozilla. Um, WebKit seems supportive, generally speaking, and and we are ready. So, like, yeah, I want to, I want to get it done. And the developers want it as well. Like, okay, like in a month. Uh, a couple months. A couple months. A couple like months. Six months. Yeah, five yeah, months. yeah, yeah, yeah. Four sure. months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like four or five. Like, okay. I, my goal is to have it like done, dusted, shipped, and grown. By the end of 2020. Absolutely. But yeah, That's we'll see. So Hold me to it. I will see about that. I know. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking to, um, who was I talking to? Well, you know, I was, well, we were talking to Rich Harris on a recent podcast. It was like, when is the, when is the Svelte, you know, shipping and what's yeah. the next release? And he's like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the answer is always like, well, you know, we don't know yet, right? And, right, right. You know, we just have to finish this list and, you know, find it to rewrite. It's, it's more difficult, things like that. And I was talking to... Um, is this for Svelte 5? Yes. Yeah. And uh, who was I talking to um, yesterday? Anyways. Point B. Is Jeff the speaker? Um, yes, it was Jeff. Jeff, Jeff. Rich. So Jeff Rich, I was talking to Jeff Rich, and um, he was like, uh, you know, we were, we were kind of laughing because if you don't put a date on it, right, then it'll never get done. Yeah. But then if you put a date on it, then you'll probably maybe miss the date. Always, yeah. Right? And so it's like, well, which one's better? But, you know, I mean, I don't know, I think putting a date on and missing it. Except, you know, you know, here's the thing, right? Like, yeah, you're trying not to put on a date and like, date on it because you don't want people to complain that you're missing the date. Right. However, people are going to complain anyways. Yeah, I was going to say. About everything. Right, right. So it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. So it's like, if you, if you put a date on something, you, you over, you're almost guaranteed to over promise and under deliver. Right. But at least you're promising. Yes. Like, you're, at least you have the promise. Yes. Okay, that's the plan. Exactly. <laughs> and so yeah, that's, I think getting concrete about dates. 
is, is good in that sense for sure. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's but uh, yeah, it's been a battle. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, cool. I'm so excited. Yeah. I don't know. So if people want to follow this, like, where do they go? Oh. Um, I think so. The first thing is our repository for proposal is on GitHub. It's like the YCG, the, the web uh, incubator group, mm -hmm. web, web incubator community group. Um, these are usually a, a set of specs for people who don't know that get upstreamed into Web 3 c and what working group specs, which is our goal. Um, so if you go to YCG slash observable, that's our that's our repository. It's got tons of fanfare and, and you know, congratulations from the developers that really are excited cool. about it. We've had really great uh, feedback with the community and talking about different concerns and ways we can shape APIs to make more sense. So that's that's the number one place. And secondarily, honestly, you can probably follow me on Twitter because okay. I've tweeted a good bit about the proposal Yay. and then much as well. Yeah. So we, we always try and publicize our progress on it and uh, soon publishing a date. So. Yes. Oh my gosh, this is yeah. so exciting. Well, definitely check point. out um, Dominic on Twitter and um, you know, yeah. check out the GitHub. Do, what, do you know the URL? Top yeah, yeah, it's uh, github.com slash slash uh, WICG slash observable. Okay, cool. YCG slash observable. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, okay, absolutely. and now everybody, you know, the half of you that are listening who care about it, yay. The half of you that don't care about it. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter and then you'll care about it. <laughs> exactly, yes. Exactly. Um, and you'll have a reason to. And it sounds like it's really, again, going to enable a lot for the website. It's our plan. Thank you so much for the interest. Yes, thank you, Deb. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Oh. Sometimes it's hard to bridge the gap between business objectives and tech implementation, and it can get messy. This dot is trusted by top names like Meta, Google, and T-Mobile, and they love helping business leaders fulfill their strategic digital initiatives. Check them out at thisdot.co. One more time, that's T-H-I-S-D-O-T dot C-O.